All right, here we are going into turn 10, August 1919. So we are going to roll for initiative and see if the whites can maybe, maybe win this one. Oh, the whites indeed do win on a five to one. So for the first time in a great long while, maybe since the start of this war in August 1918, the whites will actually have initiative. I think, didn't they win once else? I don't know, maybe not. Okay, so let's put it back here on the big board. All right, let's roll for random events. This time the reds will get to have their event first. And that's definitely gonna be a red leader. That's an 11. It is a red leader. So we are going to randomly pick a red leader. There's only a few left. All right, and Gorov is coming in, he's back. He's smarting from being ousted from the field command, but he's begging for a front, and the front he will get is the south. Hey, okay, that's pretty decent. Okay, so now we have Igorov and Frunze in the south and southwest. It's a very potent area to have two good leaders in. Um, this is immediately going to pay dividends. I think we're going to have to see if we can bring the pain. This is going to have renewed urgency on the part of the whites here. Now they're going to really have some problems if they didn't already have a lot of problems. But we also get this uh, token for free. So when we decide what kind of chits we want to have, we get uh, the Southwest, the South, and the Field Staff chit for free. So that's pretty nice. You can see, like, as you get more red leaders, uh, uh, the red player, you just start steamrolling. You know, like, you just get more and more and more. And, and um, yeah, you can see how that kind of adds to your advantage. It also kind of mimics the way historically the reds did. I mean, they were slowly getting better and better. And by 1920, had largely secured most of the territory um, that was in revolt. Anyway, white event. Ooh, they roll an 11. Oh, political intrigue. Interesting. Randomly remove one red leader if available. Ooh, that's good. And if red has the initiative, switch it to white. Well, that would have been nice on other turns, but we did not get that. But we can randomly remove a red leader if available. Hmm, randomly, like one leader in command? I think that's what it means, right? Or does it mean from the cup? That is a great question. Now I have to look up leader rules. Oh, I was thinking I could just like blaze through this turn and of course immediately I get something that I haven't ever really dealt with before. Maybe it's in the back under special units. Let's see, leaders. Red leaders are never eliminated. They are only removed from the map. Their command box when replaced. Oh, that doesn't help. Where are the random events? All right, well, this is a lot of, it's a lot of just not doing anything on the camera and I hate to do that. So let me look one more place and make sure we don't see it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna make a call and um, go to the sequence of play and see if it says anything randomly. Hmm, does not say anything. All right, so I'm gonna rule that because it's political injury, I'm gonna rule that it's gonna be something in the Red Army High Command because that actually makes a lot more sense in terms of um, what political intrigue means. So we have three leaders. I'm gonna roll a die and we'll say one to two is uh, Kaminev, three to four is Frunze, five to six is Agorov. Let's see what we can get here. Oh, Igorov. So Igorov comes in, but then is immediately dismissed because of his uh, maybe suspect past. He was dismissed from the 
High command, field staff after all. Maybe he wasn't really capable of running the south. Anyway, does he get removed for the rest of the game? No, he can randomly come back in another subsequent event, so he's just temporarily disgraced. So, that actually helps us out a little bit, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of nice. It might have been nice to have lost Frunze, but uh, he's too canny. He's too good to do that. Okay, so now we move on to the strategic phase, strategic movement. Uh, Siberians will not be engaging in strategic movement. Neither will the Reds, um, even though they have this issue with the uh, Future Guide. They've got some two armies coming. I think that's more than enough to deal with it. And nothing down here to really strategically move. And I think the Siberians, of course, don't really have anything either. So... Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so we do the first turn, and it's going to be a white selection, which is a which is a rarity. Go ahead and put some of the chits in that I know we're not going to have to worry about. Because we're definitely not going to have Poland or like the North Islamics or eh, the Northwest won't go either because they they've got their goal. So it's either going to be AFSR or Siberian. I think it's definitely going to be AFSR. The Siberians are just going to be toast anyway, right? So let's go ahead and zoom in here and think about what we want to do with the FSR. All right, so they are cut off here from Novosibirsk or Nova. No, that's not, that's not Novosibirsk, though. That's uh, Novosibirsk. Novosibirsk. Anyway, my bad, I'm totally butchering that. But they are fighting their way over here, and they do have that. And if they can take this hex, they will have the four they need at the end of this turn to stave off allied withdrawal. So it's sort of one of these things where can I keep it going? There's a weakened army here. The red train is here. If I could make it evacuate, that would be a huge move. Um, and these guys can finally escape, which might be the best thing about this, is that I get the, the Cossacks out before they get surrounded here. Um, can they help out at all? Uh, I mean, I could go up here, but then they're just going to get cut off again. So it's got to be like one, and then we have to leave a garrison there. Oh, that's Rostov, and we kind of need to hold Rostov. Otherwise we lose our ability to um, do what we need to do. And I have only... Oh, wait, this is the southern forces. I actually have garrisons. I have lots of garrisons I can throw down. But the garrisons aren't that great. Was this a green garrison? It was. They use like this weird teal or bluish green for the southern forces and then green for the Siberians and it's just a really not great color choice but that's okay. Oh, if I leave that it's pretty much guaranteed that they will take Rostov and I really need them not to take Rostov. <laughs> I need these points. I don't think I'm going to be able to keep the allies from withdrawing. That means I'm going to lose my tank which I desperately need to keep. But there's just not going to be any way to do that. Technically, there is a way to do that, I guess. I can siphon a unit over here to relieve. Uh, let's see, I really have to go up to Harkov and, and hold it with force. Yeah, this is. I'm not going to be able to really keep the allies from running away. And it may be for mood anyway, because Petrograd may just fall. Uh, but you really want you really think you can do it sometimes. Alright, let's see. This guy's just what, four, and he's got the red train. Oh, I'm making a huge mess here. Okay. So I would not have to move these guys up to get two to one and make it one to one odds. And then I would probably not suffer a loss because I'd be able to get the maximum I think I can get on this guy. That would be big. If I kill this guy, he's probably just going to come back. Um, yeah, and going up here, I don't have supply because this is all cut off. And if I come up here, I just won't have... I mean, I would, but it, no, actually I wouldn't. So I can't even advance into that hex. Hmm. So yeah, maybe it's just time to keep beating your retreat. And then hopefully find some way to outmaneuver this army because it's slow... Slow and unwieldy in some ways. 
I think that's just what we're going to have to do. Is there a way to get up here? One, two, three. Nope. Won't be able to get there in force. That is really too bad. And I can't hold rust off. Um, who boy. Oh yeah, I'm not going to be able to get up there. It's just I could move things, but then he's got at least eight army points he could move over. Unless I attack that army and get something up here and bring his... But then I'm leaving Rostov open. Ah, you can't. I can't have it either way, right? I think the best we can do is just keep coming over here and trying to hold this stuff, I'm guessing. I mean, we can try to hold this. It's a red city, though, so we don't get any benefit for holding it, you know? This is a red city. That's a red city. Um, all right, let me take a break and let me think about what I'm going to do because I'm tired of mulling on camera. All right, I, I was thinking about this and it was a really hard mind puzzle until I realized that I have... Um, Garrison units that I haven't been using. <laughs> and I'm like, garrison units, of course. Because the question was, how was I going to be able to take and hold um, both Harkov, uh, if I can get to it, and also Rostov from attack? And and the, really the answer is, is that I can just take my garrison units and hold these cities because they'll keep them occupied and thus I can draw supply out of Sevastopol down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw down a garrison... So this is still a risky move. This is where you get, but you have to do these kind of things. And he's going to go one, two, three. Um, I don't know about the Machno unit. Let me look it up real quick. He can stack, right? Well, I guess technically he's, I'm moving him because he's part of the Southern forces. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll just go move him to do something annoying. Yeah, actually I can do something annoying with him and it'll be great. I'm going to put him right here. Yeah, I'll put him right there. That'll work, because then I can just come in here and take this. Da -ding! The FSR will move there, and Alexia. So I only have three points I can cram into this red city, which sucks. Um, but I can put that guy there, and that's sort of... Interesting puzzle for the Reds now. Anyway, the garrison cities keep the supply flowing to them there. Um, they're taking that city. That puts the whites at the ever necessary four resources. I make sure I double check. I have that one, two. Um, three. Where's my fourth one? Oh, four. Yeah. I forgot. One, two, three. And I have Petrograd. It's four. Okay, good. So over here, though, I have to hold Rostov, and it can't fall this turn, And but I need to, like, you know, at least weaken these armies. Because here's my thought. The Reds would love to have Major Withdrawal go down next turn, because it really greatly hampers the Whites totally, and it will pretty much kill them. They're going to have to take at least two armies over here to get a 2-1, to because right now it would be just be 4-3, to three, so that wouldn't even be... Um, it would be one to one odds, it wouldn't be two to one, but if they brought the other one over, it'd be two to one. I would like to attack this army, I can't. Therefore, I know these three armies are gonna probably come over here and try to attack and take Rostov, right? So I can't leave this weakened uh, stack here. So what I'm gonna do is we're effectively gonna take these guys out. Oops. Effectively, we're going to actually take these guys out. They will come up here. Those guys will move there. And what that's going to let us do is we're going to attack that army. We're going to try to, well, we're going to weaken it. I hope we don't take a loss. It isn't a city. Which would, ah, that is interesting. I could take that city. Um, but would I still be in supply? Yeah, I still would be in supply, technically, because all these units would let me still draw supply. Oh, that's cool. I could move those guys in there, but... Or at least that'd be the, the, those guys, but I don't know if we'd do that. Anyway, I'm just using here. They're going to attack the 15th Army there. So let's go ahead and do that attack. Let's stop mumbling and let's just get it done. All right. 
Ah, uh, let's see. I believe we have six. Yes, yeah, so we have twelve. So that's um, three to one. It is on a river that we are attacking from because I'm in Rostov. Yes, yeah, so we are on the river. So he only gets a one shift. So that becomes uh, two to one. Yeah, he's toast. The the uh, toast result. So he's done. I don't even need to add it up because I know it'll be plus 13 because all these guys are full strength. Anyway, so he takes a loss and must retreat. And he'll retreat back to Zaritsev. Okay, so could advance and take that city. And they would still be in supply. And they would have a city defense that actually means something, which is almost invaluable for them. So that's actually probably the best idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. I think that's going to be because they may draw this army out, but I really doubt they're going to bring that kind of forces just to try to crush the Cossacks. But they could. They might, but I doubt it. So, yeah, that actually works out. Okay, so that was good. Glad the Whites got the initiative, and they really needed that to make this kind of move happen. Okay. Northwest is not going to do anything because it's holding out for the inevitable, although it could... It could sortie out, but it's not going to because then it wouldn't get the advantage here. I say sortie, that's like a plain turn. It could march out and go attack that army there. But why leave the coast where we get the nice Baltic unit to help us out? Um, if I had the AIF active offense, that'd be amazing. But that's just, that, that just not good enough luck. So Northwest is going to chill. Oh, the Bonder Gold unit, I guess, will move. He'll go one, two, three. Just in case he eventually gets released, he can come help out. Okay. I guess technically I could have used my amphibious invasion to move some guys out of there, <laughs> out of Rostov to uh, reinforce Petrograd. I didn't think about that. Eh, it wouldn't matter anyway. Okay, next shit is logistics. So everybody is in supply, as far as I can tell. The one unfortunate thing is, of course, the red train in Lugansk is going to make this guy instantly heal. And otherwise, let's do the southern front here. So we have three injured guys here. So we'll do the top guys will be the red die. Nope, no, no such luck. And there's one more guy in the bottom, so we're gonna roll for him. Nope. All right, let's roll for the two red armies. We'll make the one in Zaritsa and the red die and the 16th. No, both of those fail. Um, the Polish units have one. They do not get it. Uh, the seventh army up by Petrograd does not get it. That leaves us with Just that 12th army. No. And then we do have the Siberians. I think that's it. Yeah, the Siberians and the Cossacks. We'll make the Siberians the red die. Yeah, they make it. Alright, so that gives that stack just a little bit more bite. And I'm pretty happy with my garrison placement. I don't need to remove any. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Okay, okay. So that's, that was logistics. All right. Uh, field staff chit. Um, ooh, the north front. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to activate the north front and try to retake Petrograd.
So it's pretty simple, basically. I wish this thing had rallied, but it did not. I'm gonna go one, and this guy's gonna go one, two, three. And we're gonna attack Petrograd. Now the Baltic fleet will come assist, but it does not really count as manpower. It just counts as a token. So they have three points. He's bringing eight. That is a two to one attack. Uh, it is a red city, so they get no defensive bonus. Ooh. One to one. What is this going to produce? It's not going to be good for the reds necessarily. So they get two plus three is five. Um, our defensive units, unfortunately, get no bonuses there. That kind of sucks. But they have four plus one times one is four. So it's only a plus one differential on a two to one attack. Um, actually, no, they get plus two defense there. I'm so dumb. So they get, what is that, four, five, six? And these guys only have what, five? So they get a minus one on a two to one. And a minus one is an A result. Oh man, little A, so. Yeah, all right. The holdout. Wow, that was really lucky roll here. Could have been a much worse for the Reds, but that was extremely lucky for the Whites there. The holdout. Wow, this might mean that Alec Withdrawal will be with the... It'll, it'll actually be staved off for another turn. That's actually kind of amazing. Okay. Um, very good for the Whites. Very, very good for the Whites there. Very bad for the Reds. Some, some people probably got shot. Okay. Polish units, again, are very happy with what's going on. As are the North and Islamic fronts. They're definitely not going to move. Siberian, this is going to be a largely a runaway operation. So they could have maybe been caught, but once again, just narrowly escaping the clutches. Um, the Latvian rifles. So we will move. The question is, oh, what kind of defense? There's not very good defense. There's no defensive terrain here. So we have one, two, three, yeah. And we'll do Yarrowville. We'll just have this guy. I'll just go hide in Omsk for now. Actually, he'll hide just outside of Omsk right there. These guys will move there. Got sleeves. That's what happened? Some stuff got knocked over. Okay. Wow. Well, the South Front gonna be interesting now. I don't think we can take Rostov at all. I just don't think that's gonna be a possibility. So yeah. Yeah, I don't see how that's gonna get um, accomplished with what we have. Unfortunately, that was just enough for them to hold out because the thing is getting those units there was big. Luckily, I just thought about the garrisons there. That was that was actually super big and the, the partisans are not helping us at all here. So I can, I can still get an attack on here because I can just go, I think I can go, actually this guy will have to go one, two, three, and then this guy can just go one, two, because this, this doesn't create a zone of control. And then I can get it. That's what I have to do there because I have to get that attack. Although it's going to open Lugansk up, but I'm not so worried about that. It is a red city, so I'm, I'm less worried. Spreading these guys out is, is good. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go one, two, three, four, two. That gives us the best chance there. Here, we've just got a whole nother pickle. I mean, I'd rather, I just need to start treating these forces because we're about to get replacements. It's about to be a strategic turn anyway. So let's... 
let's try to get a surround on this guy. I think that's a good idea. One, because he can't move from zone of control, zone of control. Two, I gotta move there. Gotta go one, two, and come out there. And that's it, because I can't get this other guy out. And the flotilla is not helping us on the river necessarily here. Oh, and I have this unit. I forget, he was probably, he probably didn't get moved last turn. That was a mistake. That was a bad mistake. One, two, three. Yeah, he'll come down there. Um, yeah, I don't think the guy in Zarid's in. He can actually get out anywhere. So I think we'll just stick with that attack. Uh, that will be a one-to-one -one attack. Hopefully we can get something going there and get a good roll, hopefully. Um, Cause I need some, need some breakthroughs. So let's go ahead and do this attack. It's the far more important attack. Um, Cause it actually will determine if alley withdrawal occurs or not. So we do have three points there. They have eight. That is a two to one attack. Uh, I do not get any shifts because it is a red city. It's two to one. Gonna have to hope for some good, good die rolls here. Could have been worse. Three and a two, that might be just enough to hold out. So they get six and they have a seven, eight defense. They have a two and eight, so it cancels out. It's a two to one with a zero differential. And that is an AD result. Just enough to hold out. So it's a little A, little D. So I think we'll take Let's take this guy out. And who's gonna get hurt here? I think we'll make this guy hurt. Although he has an awful defensive negative mod. Oh, who has the worst one? Uh, we'll take that up, because I'd rather have the worst defense. There we go. Okay, so wow, holding out big time there. That was a big, big holdout. This means Alec withdrawal will not occur. That was an incredible turn of events for the Whites. Very, very good. It actually gives them some staying power, not a lot. Uh, as you can see, it's still pretty much inevitably going to turn against them, but maybe they can hold out a little longer. This attack is going to be much more dicey. It is also a 4 8 12 against a 6, so it's 2 to 1. Uh, there is a city they get a shift for. They're on the river, so it's just one shift. It becomes a one-to-one -one attack. Hmm. Six to two. Even though these guys have terrible defensive modifiers right now. Um, so they have eight, so they have three units times six is 18. 16. So that's what, minus six, two, four, six. So yeah, 12. And then these guys have six. 9, 12, so it becomes a 0 on a 1 to 1, that is a little A. That was right, right? So that was a 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 6, 12, 18, yep. Uh, minus six. Yep. So that was a zero. Damn. See, that was that was really good for the whites. They're actually getting really good rolls when they need to. So very big, very big. All right. That was actually a total, total bumbling. Southwest front. There is. Those two units are actually in the southwest front. I didn't mark them as done. I probably should have, but um. They're not going to be able to move because something else is happening in the southwest. The east will just continue their dogged pursuit of the Siberians. And I think essentially we're just going to ruin these guys up. We will leave a garrison there. And we'll also leave a garrison there just to be super safe. Although technically I really only need this line open, don't I? Yeah, I don't even need another garrison, that's fine. Although if they get partisans, it's so annoying. I won't do that. Okay. One, two, three, that guy moves there. One, two, three, and one, two, three. So that's that 
is the East. Yeah, they are coming. And that leaves only the AIF, who are going to do nothing because they are largely ineffectual and have. Technically, I guess these guys over here could slip over here and start uh, putting the herd on, on Volodá. But technically, they can't because this unit was cutting supply in that hex right there. So if they leave there, they won't be able. Oh, they get. Do get supply from there, I guess. Hmm, that's interesting. There's really no way to take advantage of that unless... Nah, there's just too many lines. They have too many ways to get supply back to Moscow. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll just hold up there. I'm probably like totally playing AIF wrong, and, and if anybody plays Reds and knows what's going on and, and can tell me, school me on that, that'd be great, because I, I think I'm pretty much messing that up. Okay, so that's the end of that turn. Incredibly, the Whites have held on. Not going to lose um, Allied support yet. It's almost a shame they lost it so early. It's super key, because that means we're going to get to keep our tank. So nice, incredible daring moves over here have forced the Red Hand, and it's quite open here. So if the Whites win initiative, there could be some serious reckoning and pain here. And, and the protracted struggles of the Siberians, even though it's been pretty much a one-sided contest, it's... It's beginning to hurt here. I've, I've devoted so many resources toward this that it really needs to end itself quickly. And also, Petrograd has stubbornly held on, and this is going to become increasingly worrisome for me. So, whew, I thought the Reds were secure, but a few turn of events have really uh, demonstrated the fragility of some of their positions. Oh yeah, and the Whites are still kicking it. Okay, so we're going to move into strategic turn D. They will get this uh, Konarmia. It's a very powerful unit. It's one of the most powerful in the game. Um, and then we're going to head on to another turn. So we come back, strategic turn D, and then operational turn 11, September 1919.